Seven o'clock, it's time to start the organizational meeting in Arlington School District. This is uh, January 11th of 2022. Uh, before I start the meeting, I'd like to make an announcement. Uh, the Norwalk City School District lost a member of their family Monday morning. Uh, Gary W. Bauer passed away. He was a 1961 Norwalk High School graduate, a 1966 Ohio State graduate, and he received a master's degree from Ohio State in 1973. Gary was a Norwalk School Board member for 11 years, and he was also a hearing County Commissioner, and he did serve on the BGSU Firelands College Board member on the board for eight years. Gary's community service was uh, Gary's most, most important thing. Our deepest sympathy, our deepest condolences go out to the Bauer family. This time I ask for a moment of silence for Gary Bauer. Thank you. Okay, call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mrs. Crawford? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Norwich? Here. Mr. Ritzenthal? Here. Mrs. Witt? Here. Okay, section B, the oath of office for new and re-elected members. Mrs. Crawford, Mr. Norwich, Mr. Ritzenthal, do you swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and that you will Perform faithfully the duties of your office as member of the Board of Education of the North City School District. Thank you. I do. Thank you. Okay. Adoption of the agenda. And I need a motion to adopt the agenda as we have received the organizational meeting agenda. Thank you, Mr. Norris, was it? Thank you. Uh, a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Norris. Mr. Wick. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Norris? Here. Mrs. Wicks? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rickenbauer? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Nomination and election of board president. Um, before we get into that, it's my job to explain the president and vice president the duties that uh, to the new board members. I know in 2012 when I came into the Board of Education, it was explained by me, and I thought that was just very helpful. Um, some of the duties I will go over. Some will be added as the school year goes on, but um, the board president and vice president attends agenda meetings every month. Uh, they're set by the superintendent Thursday or Friday mornings or afternoon, sometimes Monday mornings. Um, the board president will develop, develop and distribute evaluation forms for the superintendent treasurer for the 22 school year. The board president then collects evaluations from all members and processes those forms. Uh, an executive session to be held to review the evaluations with all board members and then they finalize them. Uh, board president will meet with the superintendent and the treasurer to discuss uh, the superintendent and treasurer evaluation. <clears throat> this is an audit year and uh, Mr. Moore and I uh, already met with the auditors in the spring to get that going. Uh, they will be back, or we met last fall, I should say, they'll be back this spring to uh, complete that, finalize that and the board president and vice president attend those and as far as i know it's open to any board member too okay um also there'll probably be meetings with the architects and the ohio facilities construction commission for the elementary building project when those meetings are scheduled uh, usually the president vice president go to that and also there is a on a regular agenda you'll see uh there's discussion on a meeting that's coming up where we will probably need a special board meeting for that one okay and then the board president attends all court hearings when he or she is directed to attend and there are probably other duties that i may have missed but that's what's coming up and what i've done in the past and other people have done in the past but this time i'd like to call for nominations for board president I can nominate this okay anyone like, else like to nominate Mr. okay is there anyone else Okay. At this time, uh, Mrs. Dupont, you'll take a roll call by name of the person for president. Is that correct? Correct. Well, I will call roll, and you will um, voice your 
2024 term. Um, I have been sworn in there already, but if there's any changes, um, and so at this time, if everybody is okay. But well, I'd like to see a, a change because uh, you've had your turn and I've had a turn. I think uh, two terms I had, two terms you had, I think we got to get somebody to Mrs. Crawford probably be a good person to put over there as a representative. I'm by the way, Mr. Moore. I know we have a couple of people. So, a few. Or what are you? I mean, no, that's fine. I'm, I'm I have some things coming up that I don't think I could. Mm -hmm. Or there would be more people there. So. Um, yes. That's tomorrow, isn't it? That's tomorrow is that. That's fine with me. That's because they have a dinner. Is that why you nominated me? Because you know I have a more no, thing going on? No, um, honestly, I'm not, I, uh, not sure. Yeah, right. Um, this is a three-year appointment. Okay. Oh, Two years. Okay, yeah. That's a three-year. Okay. I've already done it. Yeah. I spoke to the superintendent tonight, and he was anticipating a call from me um, once the decision was made tonight. So that's the intent, um, whether it be a continuation of Mrs. Wick or someone else. So I intend, if um, that is finalized today, that we can or this evening that I so can make that call. I don't mind getting involved in anything. That's why I'm here. But I'm definitely, I think uh, Mr. Wissenthaler knows, too, that I am also a professional employee outside of here. So if Mrs. Wick wants to do something and she does it well and has passion for it and has that time schedule to do it at 10 a.m., uh, that's when the meetings are. I'm happy to let Mrs. Wick continue. But I usually say yeah. both. I mean, yeah. I, I've always yeah. enjoyed you going and talking when I was in the audience about it, and I have absolutely no concerns about it unless it goes to a vote. I think everybody should have experience out there, too. Yeah. So, <laughs> Are you able to make it tomorrow? Is that what you're concerned about? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty short notice for me. <laughs> for that, so. Where do you go from there with that? Then? I can. No, tomorrow, same as guys, if that's okay with everybody. And then the decision of the board to do this or is that yeah, decision? Yeah, no, it's just okay. So, personally, I'd be happy to do that. If you want to say it, too. Oh, yeah. We have one voting member, so there could be a transition if it is tomorrow, and it can't be the handoff, according to Superintendent Kathy Hovey. He said that can occur as long as he's aware, he's aware of that because you're all welcome to attend, just like a meeting such as this. You're all welcome to attend. We just have one voting member, so we need to know on that and transition. So, I do have all there are other things we're going to talk about that I am interested in that when the PSI am meeting in the next day for me. I'd be happy to continue. I do see your point about switching. It's just, I don't know if I'm going to have to set a tomorrow. But. I, I think they could make arrangements. I know it's a short month. It, it's been like that every year in January. When I took a visit, it took an MFA problem. Well, it used man, to be that once, I could get a couple more hours. Right. <laughs> it's not simple. Well, it's not I think that would be some long thing I'm happy to let us do that. If you can make it, if we could have three of the meeting, this is not one meeting. Are they always coming out during the week? Yeah, on yes. Wednesdays. There's a second Wednesday or Monday. Right, I mean, that's where my hang up comes. I mean, there's uh, many other things that they're going to talk about that we're going to appoint someone to that doesn't have that time for. So that's my concern. That has, it, you know, that has their other ones that are not during the day.
I don't have a special I'd be honored to stay on. I don't want that. I mean, if you're happy with it, then I'm happy. I say, please, 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 there. I know it's not something that I would be able to do. Working my shift during the day. She had a flexible schedule. I mean, unless you don't want to meet you and have more flexible schedule, I'm not meeting yourself. I'm fine. I just think, I mean, I, I think you'd be a good person. Over there. I don't think Mr. McCullough would have a problem because he knows that we have a meeting tonight. Right. right. Call. It's a two year appointment. Like I said, Lisa had her turn. I, well, when, I had mine. I just like to see it spread out a little bit. Well, with her, with them having scheduled conflicts, would you be able to do it? That's what I mean. Well, that we wouldn't have any voting power over that. Because it would have to be the person I think would be placed with this. Or if we just went do as a, we can't go as a sub. It depends on what you guys I think she's asking if we go as a sub. No, I meant well, like I meant you want to take the appointment. The appointment. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. No, yeah, no, no, I meant no, no, for the employer. It's more than you want to take the appointment. The three of us have to watch this. I'd be happy to stay on, but I mean, I'm fine. Well, if we, without jumping around, there are a couple other appointments um, coming up. Are any of them are that you know of? At night or after five, or something a little more flexible that might be something that would be something I would do in this regard to do that make it a little more flexible in the time frame. I don't, I don't, I can't answer that. That's not my question. I know there's, there's one meeting that I am sure of that I'm going to be missing, and then that's about some of the I mean, I might be a little more vacation around it, you know, do the weeks office. Right. Yeah, but there was one that I know I'm going to have to miss. Because it's a personal reason why I'm talking. Are talking about our meetings? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because I was, I mean, there's the legislative liaison, a uh, student who failed. So, I mean, out of those, Trustee from the endowment fund. We have a lot of them that may not have a conflict during their day. You know what I mean? So I guess it's up to you. you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll three of you that have a little more of a flexible schedule. Well, I guess it's up to you knowing that I'm going to miss one for sure. And like I said, it could be two. Well, I'll, 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 I'll not make it right. We all need to be permissible. Is that permissible? One or two? It happens. Yeah. It happens yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, as long as it's permissible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can save my marriage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's watching too today. <laughs> Is that so glad that somebody else is about that. 
Well, we're only doing 730 the first time I've seen that we've had that option open. Well, we only did 730. You said we could have, have Steve come there. So I can move this up. Is everybody okay with 7 o'clock? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go with 7 o'clock then. And he has the dates listed. Well, they're going to change it. Go early yeah. if you want. I would be willing to go earlier if you want. 7 to 8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the dates listed, are there any conflicts that we know of? Um, I think November is usually the month that we run into an issue. And sometimes in June. I have a great conflict that I'm with. Um, that's a good idea. It is. If we can go, well, if we can go, eh, it'll be fine. It's fine. Yeah. It can, we can always change it. Yeah. Again, so. And then November. Let's see when Capital Conference gets scheduled. Maybe we'll move that into We'll leave it as is, and then um, if there's any changes in the meantime, the future will make those changes. Um, I go to Ohio News to my office, but there is newspapers for the circulation in which school legal notices will be published. Jay, well, let's do items I do. So we read them all, it's okay. I do on as stated. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay. okay, so we've got the newspapers. We're going to go establish board service fund for fiscal year 2022 at 1500 Board member compensation at $125 per meeting. The board resolution January 2020 for new members. $80 for current members due to state law elected official compensation mm -hmm. rules. Item L, appoint a board member to serve as trustee for a endowment fund for the Norwalk City Schools to represent the Norwalk City School District at the Board of Education. Somebody wants to uh, nominate or take that position for the endowment fund. That is an evening. Good evening. Better take at 5 and that one. 430 start. Who's it once a month? Typically, an hour long. Who is it currently? We've lost that sound. What about, is anyone interested in that? Or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know you're quiet. <laughs> Um, I can make that time thing work. I don't know. A point of action, please, I remember. I don't know what state school district. Board of Education to Ohio State School Board Association. The legislative liaison attends the um, Ohio School Board meeting where they go over their bylaws and adopt them to just to it. It's usually the first day of the capital conference. Student Achievement Liaison, Member of the Norwalk City School Board of Education, Ohio State School Board Association. That's the appointment of Vice President. Okay. So you'll take that and designate the treasurer and or treasurer. I'm sorry. Designate the treasurer and or superintendent. Designate. 
for public records training. Points the following of the following standard committee to 2022 audit finance building grounds. Don't we usually all? Uh, well, we take part in that. Yeah. It's, it's all three separate areas. And, uh, sometimes we have to have a board meeting. Depends on how many people show up. Q, authorize I should, I don't mean to stop you, but it depends on how many say they're going to be there and they get right, you know, right. so they can schedule them. We're all schedule a special meeting. This is the first meeting, the vice president, the first meeting. Usually, yeah, they're usually in all those. Right. So, so mother, I mean, you're not going to restrict them. Right. Item Q, authorize the treasurer to pay all bills within the limits of Appropriations and bills are received, and when the goods and or services have been received as ordered, they provide a list of invoices paid to the Board of Education at its next regular meeting. Our authorized treasurer to modify appropriations as deemed necessary, provided all such modifications are reported to the Board of Education at its next regular meeting. And as authorized superintendent to Authorize the appointment of legal counsel as needed by Papa Wedner, Jess Sumner, Associates, Squire, Sanders, LP, and Bricker, and Eckler. Item T, authorize the treasurer to purchase liability insurance, insurance for board members, superintendent, and treasurer. Item U, authorize the treasurer to borrow any money for commercial sources. Item B, authorize the treasurer to credit interest earned on the following funds in 2022 to those respective funds with all others. Interest earned to be credited to the general fund as listed. Item W, authorize the treasurer to request tax advances from the county auditor per ORC 321-34. Item X, authorize the superintendent to hire between board meetings as stated, item Y, authorize superintendent to accept resignations as stated, item Z, Ohio School Board Association, Ohio School Board Membership, OSBA Legal Aid Fund, Ohio Coalition for Equity and Adequacy, and Ohio Educational Policy Institute membership for 2022. The A appoints the following building cashiers for the calendar year 2022 as listed. We have a motion for items. I A A. And second motion. Mr. Norris? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Wittenthaler? Yes. Mr. West? Yes. And motion for adjournment. Thank you, motion for adjournment. Second. Thank you. Mr. Wittenthaler? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Norris? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. We will go right into the records retention meeting. Um, if you need a little break, it's actually <laughs> myself, the superintendent, and the board president. Um, records retention is required to be done once a year, so we do it annually when we're doing a January meeting. And what I have for you this time is we have a new um, records retention schedule. Um, it's actually a template that's done by the auditor of state, so it really makes it easy. We don't have to recreate the wheel with what's required for uh, records retention. So I will, after we approve this today, I will send this down to the auditor of state and to the Ohio Historical Society, and this will become our new records retention set. Okay, we'll start with the uh, Board of Education Records Retention Meeting. 
opening of records commission meeting. And call to order. Roll call. Mrs. Wick? Yes. Mr. Cooley? Yes. And approve <laughs> updated records retention schedule. Okay, as I handed that out, it's basically just a template that the auditor state's office does. And there's no changes from our current schedule, although this one has a lot more details to it. Um, it discusses emails and records, the fact that it's not the format in which you receive the record, but it's the contents of the record. Um, social media, the fact that it's a secondary record. So those are the big changes from our current adaptive record retention schedule. We also have the bulletin, the 2019-03, the AOS bulletin, which talks about the updated STARS program. If you click on the one that says, that one, I think. I passed out to everyone the Sunshine Manual so that you have a 2021 Sunshine Manual so that you're able to see everything that's included with the record, both open meetings and the record retention. One open. <laughs> so try the next one where it says stars for fiscal 20. Part of the new part of the new um, auditor bulletin was the auditor state is, is part of our annual audit. They do what's called the stars and we um, they check for compliance with public records, whether we are responsive when we answer public records, whether we do our records retention meeting. Um, and we actually received four out of four stars. So I thought that was a, a good thing to show you that. <laughs> no such luck. Um, and that's really all we have for the work that's missing. So, um, motion. We don't really need a motion. We can just adjourn this meeting and then join that. Join that. Bring it Tuesday, January 11, 2022, regular scheduled uh, board of education meeting. Call to order. Roll call. Mrs. Crawford. Here. Mr. Moore. Here. Mr. North. Here. Mr. Rissenthal. Here. Mrs. Wood. Here. She was staying for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God and man. We have a motion for an adaption of the agenda. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Norris? Yes. Mr. Wilson Fowler? Yes. Mr. Wood? Yes. Public participation. Each person who wishes to address the board will be asked to give his or her name and address. Remarks should be limited to three minutes in length. If after everyone who wishes to do so has had an opportunity to speak, additional comments can be made up to a total lot of time of three minutes. Any? Thank you. My name is Bob Drummond. I live in Norwalk School District. I'm an Air Force veteran and a retired teacher. My children and grandchildren have all attended Norwalk Public Schools, and I served on the Norwalk School Board in the 1980s. I appreciate this opportunity to speak. Those of you who know me know that when I speak, I only tell the facts and the truth. I believe an elected school board member should behave in a professional manner at all times. They should show personal integrity and should understand and maintain confidentiality. School board members should strive to handle issues discreetly and professionally. Mrs. Crawford. On November the 11th, 2021, my wife and I met you at your medical office to congratulate you on your election to the Norwalk School Board. Twice during our conversation, I told you I had some information that I thought would be beneficial to you to be aware of. But I asked you twice to promise that the information should not be shared with anyone else. And twice you did promise that you would keep it confidential. This was information that should 
should not have been repeated to the public. A few days later, I became aware that you shared the information with numerous other people. The important part of this is not what the information was, but the fact that you did not keep your promise of confidentiality. In my opinion, that means you cannot be trusted as an individual and as a school board member. During that meeting, you said that if you had a good idea with a majority vote, you could override the superintendent because he works for the school board. You mentioned twice in that meeting that a school board member would often call you late in the evening and was obviously inebriated. Also in the meeting, you said you would not support Lisa Wick. In that meeting, you said that in a conversation with George Fisk, he could sue a man in Norwalk along with several others. You said while well, Mr. Fisk was here in Norwalk, he was never the superintendent. After a few days after our meeting, I found out that Mr. Fisk told you to stay away from Bob German because he was troubled. In social media, you said that you would work with the treasurer and the superintendent to solve money issues. That is not your job. Bottom line, Mrs. Crawford, you lied to us. You are not trustworthy. Your word means nothing because you broke your confidentiality promise. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you coming here, and I think that any time someone says something you don't like, you decide to make it in the public. Then that I get um, I didn't know you until you called my cell phone uh, after the election, and I don't not even sure how you got my cell phone number. Uh, asked to meet with me, told me I'm the only one you voted for because I was the only one you had confidence in. Um, I appreciate your feelings, but when you told me uh, in our meeting, which I did report because I wasn't sure who you were. Uh, and once you started talking about another person making illegal acts, it was my duty to let that person know that you made those allegations. And I don't regret it one bit. Um, also, when you meet with an elected official and you ask for their opinion that if, if someone quits, if you could then be elected, it almost seems like you're pushing an agenda of your own. I'm very confident in the reason I ran and the, the reason I'm here. Um, I think that you had your own agenda when you met with me. Uh, I didn't say half of the things that you had said I did, and that's okay. What I'm going to do is serve the public that put me in this seat and uh, serve the school district and where my children are attending, and I wanted to succeed. Uh, I do appreciate, again, anyone that wants to be involved in the school, uh, but I don't think that your um, comments all are factual. And what you said about Mr. Norris in that meeting was the only person I told other than my husband, and he had never the right to know. So I appreciate it. Well, <clears throat> any other public registration? Follow up, please. Okay. The fact that you lied to us speaks volumes. You can't deny that. And what we talked about in your office, you agreed that nothing would be said outside of your office. And you did. And that okay. speaks for itself. Now we're getting into a personal conversation that you two That's fine. Enough own. said. Okay. Anybody else have any? Yeah, Brett Crawford, 32 Bedford Street, Norwalk. Sir, the things, the allegations that you made, you should never spew lies like that about anyone. It's detrimental to them professionally and as a person. So you might. I can say what I want because the things that you said were disgusting and outright wrong. Yeah, but we didn't use fine language either. Let's, oh, let's, you did. Let's no, I didn't. Well, okay. Been, uh, you accused the board member of having having something terrible Maybe, with the child. Know, I think that that's very bad, Mr. Ron, and I took that to that's him fine. privately. The I'm going hurts. to at this time because it seems like the last few years it's been personal attacks on certain members. We're here as a team because of one reason only, and it's for the students and their education. We need to do what is best for the students and to make Norwalk the best. It's not about us individually and what we say and what we do, it isn't. We're gonna have disagreements and we're gonna disagree. We have to be adults, act like adults. Um, as far as if this is going to continue every month, this bashing all the time, it's getting old. I'm sorry, but it is old. 
I can say a lot because I've been put through a lot, but it's behind me. It's water under the bridge. I'm moving forward and putting my focus back on students as well as I hope all five of us can and our superintendent and director of operations. We need to work together as a team. This monthly bashing needs to stop. I'm moving on. Unless anybody else has public participation. Dan Robertson, Norwalk. Just want to second what you said. My parent hope first of all, I want to welcome you guys. Thank you for all that you do. I appreciate it. The community appreciates it. But I agree. My parent hope is that we just all get along and work for the good of the community and for the children. I, I don't attend a lot of these meetings, and I just started to attend. And I say that out of the four meetings that I've come to, three of those have been personal attacks. What does that have to do with school business? I, I don't know. I just I put them on there, but I'd like to second what you said. And let's just get down to business and do what's good for the kids, our community, and the school. Let's not make it complicated. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Anyone else? Melissa James, I live at 244 Linda Road, Norwalk. I have a daughter in school. Um, today on not the social media, but the gospel, but today on social media there was um, some sort of an announcement that there was a religious organization that would be coming to Norwalk and teaching uh, during the school day um, the students in Norwalk Public School. The post quickly disappeared when some folks start questioning um, the teaching of religion during the school day and wanted more details, and that quickly disappeared. I'm wondering if the board um, is aware of this, if there's a conversation going on. Where I know we haven't, had, yes. we haven't talked about it as a as group. But I'll address it. Okay. So I went to a meeting before Christmas. It was at the Alliance Church. It was simply to learn about what LifeWise Academy is, what its purpose is, the mission objective, what it would look like for Norwalk City Schools. So that happened prior to Christmas. There has been nothing communication from LifeWise Academy with myself or the Norwalk City School District Board of Education. The Board of Education was informed via, I do a superintendent news update. That's an email to say, I went to this meeting, here's the basics of it. Yesterday, after meeting with a board member, I met with Mr. Norris prior to this meeting. He left, and I got a call from Sancha, Sancha Roderick. She is the one leading the charge here in Norwalk for LifeWise Academy. She called me and said, I would like to have a meeting with you. The regional director is available. And I said, I have a small window today. So I met with those two individuals today at 1.30. The regional director apologized because he put it out there as though this is coming to Norwalk. It has not got to the point from a board of education or from an administrative standpoint to say it's happening or not happening. So in my discussion, in my 45 minutes with uh, Buddy, the regional director and, and Mrs. Roderick, was that I would like to have the board be communicated potentially at our February 8th meeting about lay it out, outline what this looks like. We have other schools in the county that are intending to pursue this and have this in their school come next year. New London actually is a pilot they're looking to do at the high school level. The LifeWise Academy looking at Norwalk and kind of her charge is to bring it to the elementary level. So her idea would be four, four buildings, all but Norwalk Middle School and Norwalk High School. That's what she would like to see. There's a lot of logistics and operational things that would have to be addressed before the board members would say, yes, we're in for this. The basic purpose of it is that public school kids can be removed during the school day for religious, Bible, character-based instruction. It can't happen on our grounds. It would have to be kids transported elsewhere in a to another church, to another facility, not on our grounds. When does that fall, ideally, to that schedule? During recess, during specials, et cetera. So there's the general basis for it, but there has been nothing. I let that, because uh, Mr. Norris saw that as well. He informed me of the post and I explained, there's no steps taken since then. 
I actually was asked to go to this so I would have an idea what it's about. So I learned that piece, but no, we're not skipping a, uh, from this point to this point. There's communication and some presentations that have to happen. And more importantly, even if you like the concept or I take you don't like the concept, there's pieces that principals and teachers need to have that functionally make sense within the building setting. And that's most important because we're not gonna do anything in our district that's not done well. So if we think it's ideal and good for our kids or some for those whose kids or parents say it's ideal for them, because it's a choice, it's not a forced coercion at all. Coercion at all. If that's the case, there's going to be steps have to be outlined. So that's what I have for you on that. Are specials not music, art, and phys ed? Those fall within specials. So is, the, is, is phys ed, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but is, is phys ed a mandated class still? Well, all of these they're talking with this program is one time per week. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing at that level time-wise that you couldn't make it work, but the, and I don't want to get logistics, this is not our time because we're not there, we're not ready for it, the board's not ready for this. That's why I, I paused her until our February meeting where we have time to talk before. So those things have to be looked at because, yeah, we don't want to lose kids when we know right now we're stressed. There's a lot of things that need to happen during the course of the day, we know that. Um, a lot of things that I've seen, principal-based, uh, mission-based, very similar to what we do currently with Leader and Me. We have to address a lot of a lot of issues and concerns we have with our students. How do we best do that? How do you grow that? Address from the elementary level and working your way up to secondary level. So. And they're going to be here next month, you said? Yes. Where is that? So I guess if anybody's interested, be here next month. See what they have to present. Okay, recognition. Board. Yes, so so Governor DeWine and Lieutenant Governor Houston, they established the school board recognition. They chose January as that month. So DeWine's declaration was we're going to recognize and honor those board members who serve our community. Obviously, the Norwalk community, that's the most important. That's where I'm at. That's the most important uh, district that these five individuals um, are looking out for and, and committed to spending their time. So with that said, we do have certificates. Uh, Mrs. DuPont and I joked that we have two new members. That's like the preemptive, uh, thank you for what you've done, even though this is your first meeting. So you'll get a certificate. Um, if you do well for the people of Norwalk, and then we might frame it. Uh, but right now, it's just a certificate. So uh, thank you. <laughs> So thank you very much. So we have a presentation from the nutrition group. And they brought food too, so yeah, they always uh, do that piece. They know how to operate. <laughs> So uh, Gary's going to pass out a report she's going to talk about, but I, I wanted to introduce myself first. Um, I'm Kathy Tess Davis. I'm a regional manager for the Christian Group, and I'm taking the place of Andy Pettit, uh, who was here before me and is no longer with the company. So I will be the regional manager for the time being. Um, and I worked with Gary before. She and I worked together before we worked with the Christian Group. Um, at a long-term care facility, and we worked together uh, when she was at a different school district. So we know each other very well. We have a good relationship. Um, so we're very familiar with each other. But um, in addition to introducing myself, I wanted to touch base on some participation numbers, good news. Um, I compared last December to this December, and um, I think last December you guys were just starting to serve breakfast in the schools. Um, so your breakfast numbers as of now are at about 412 breakfasts per day. Last year was at about 25. So that was great. And then lunches, we are sitting at about 1,412 lunches a day. And last year, you were only at 1,000. So we're up from last year, which is great. Um, and then in addition to that, um, reimbursement rates for lunches, breakfasts, and after-school snacks are increasing in the month of January. 
So after January, you will receive 25 cents more per lunch that you serve and 14 cents more per breakfast that you serve. So that'll be a little bit of a boost for you. Um, Terry Brothers here, police service director. For those of you who haven't on that yet, um, I started in July. It's been really awesome. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year and just kind of bringing new and more exciting events for the kids, of course, our kids are out. So I just want to highlight some events we did in December in your police service report in front of you. Um, we did quite a bit. Um, all the kids got to enjoy a Christmas lunch with ham, potatoes, veggies. Uh, we did a carving at the high school, which was really nice. Uh, the ladies decorated Christmas donuts for the kids. It was just a little extra free, which of course is smart time to prove. Um, yeah. Um, and then we satellited our, our meals for our elementary kids, and we did it also at the, the middle school level as well. Um, we also had a candy cane day that all the kids at the elementary got candy canes with their lunch, and the ladies dressed up. Some of them dressed up to just be festive. Um, we also did a drawing at the high school for one week, whoever bought or whoever received breakfast got a chance to put their name in the drawing for a movie clean basket. So just to get the kids excited to eat with us this lunch, um, it, was, it was really fun, it was really cool. Um, oh, well, we had a hot chocolate party too, so that was really nice. But looking forward to January. Today actually I'll, I'll mention we had uh, National Milk Day. So our, the elementary kids got the color uh, at Molly the Cow, which is the nutrition mascot, and they brought it back for a little fish. So just little things, but it means the world to the world. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Well, first, in honor of School Board Recognition Month, I want to thank my board members. Both my returning board members, my new board members, my old board members. <laughs> Not old, but <laughs> it was a better word than old. <laughs> um, I cannot stress how important public education is. How glad I am that all of you are willing to sacrifice your time, your effort to help our school. Each one of you brings your own perspective, and I know all of you will do what's best for our students, our staff, and our community. I feel like I should give thanks to you every month, not just January, but I did want to emphasize this during school board recognition. So, with that, my reports. The minutes, December 14th minutes, were um, sent out for approval. Then we have the December 2021 financial report. December was quiet for any major new items. You'll see when you look at your financial packet, which I don't know if you will be able to get this one. <laughs> I worked on my laptop. I don't know if it'll work on this one. Oh, there we go. But it's kind of uh, it's not in color. Okay, one minute. <laughs> one step at a time. Maybe then scan it in in color. Anyhow. Page two, the cash reconciliation. The first one is my reconciliation. The second one is the computer generated one. They're both the same. It just shows that it's been entered into our software. The next page is the investments. So when you look at the investments, the ones that are in, one more page, sorry. The ones that are in yellow, at the bottom, <laughs> those are our new CDs. Whenever there's a new investment, I always highlight it in yellow so that you're able to see it. We did have three of them that were replacements for matured CDs, and then one that was called, and then we had one that's a completely new CD. It was at a 1% interest rate, so that was like really exciting for me. <laughs> I do anticipate interest rates to start rising again soon. On to the next page for the fund balance. You'll remember last month I talked about the fact that we were. Um, um, had a negative amount of over a million dollars for our federal funds. So you'll see on this one that that's been paid. There was an um, uh, appropriation at the state level, so they were able to pay that. That made a big difference for our cash flow. It was um, just over a million dollars. You'll also notice under the food service, the cafeteria, as they said, the cafeteria fund is doing really well. We have a positive balance in that. 
That's the 111,187. It's not very often that we have a positive balance in the food service, so this is really good news. We did receive a payment from the Department of Education for administering the PEBT program. It was for $3,063. The PEBT is a special program for the staff, recipients for students, allows the families, our families, to have an increased amount of funds. It was a little bit of extra work for our EMIS department and our school secretaries. So it was nice to see ODE recognize that. And even if it was only $3,000, it was nice to receive that reimbursement. So there is a new report that I added this month. It's almost to the end. It's called the Appropriation Summary Report. The auditors thought that this would be a good report that the board would like to see. It shows what's appropriated and the percentage that's been encumbered and expended. So it allows you to see where we're at. I suppose it's too big to see all of it there. Um, it allows you to see where we're at as far as what we appropriated for the year and the percentage at the end shows what's been expended. Since we're halfway through the fiscal year, you want to see the ending numbers be at about 50% appropriated and expended. I did only do this for the general fund, the food service, the debt service, and the permanent improvement, because those are our biggest funds in our working funds. Um, had we done all of our funds, it probably would have ran to a couple hundred pages, so. And finally, ODE has posted the new funding amounts, but they've not posted all of the detail yet. I'm still working through it. It was last week that they finally got it up. It appears we're funded at our fiscal 20 level with about a $400,000 increase. So fiscal 20 was, of course, two years ago. Um, so a $400,000 increase really isn't that much if you think of it over two years and you recognize that our payroll is um, just under a million dollars. So anyhow, this is because the fair school funding plan was only phased in at 16%. According to the formula, we're $2 million underfunded by what the Fair School Funding Plan would have us funded in. So stay tuned. We'll go into this a little bit more in February when all the numbers are out there and we can get um, more detail. So next, we have a copy and printer contract with Modern Office Methods, otherwise known as MOB. <laughs> this is, we have been with empty business products for our copy machine contract. They were then bought out by Hira. And we have had nothing but problems since. So we, the machines are always down. We can't get parts. They don't answer our calls. They don't. It's just been. It's been bad. And we really need copies. <laughs> Schools run out of copies. Um, so my office and methods had approached us, and they are willing to buy out our current contract lease with the Xerox and. Lock in a price for, we'll probably be saving around $10,000 a month with this new um, contract. So what this is, is an agreement to basically lock the price in because they had one of those where if it's done before the first of the year, you can know, it's a good deal. So that's what I'm asking you to do there. Um, the actual new copy machines and um, printers won't be coming until summertime. It's basically going to replace everything that we have now with one extra one at the high school. Um, and a new one at Pleasant Elementary because they need a bigger one. And then we have a then and now approval. This is um, here at High Board of Developmental Disabilities. For our cost for students that were placed there last year, they did not bill us until December. So, of course, this is from last year, which is why um, part of the budgetary process is you can't keep things open over a fiscal year. So, we had closed a previous purchase order, so we needed to open a new one but it was for last year, so that's why um, revised code says that whatever this happens, anything over $3,000 has to be approved by the board. So I'm bringing you for approval so that we can take this away. And then finally, we have donations. We did have a donation to the robotics program of $2,000. And that's all I have for you this month. Thank you. They have a motion for approval of the treasurer's report. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Yes, we have students. Just a little. Bit. Okay. No. Uh, any discussion? How many students are there? 
we have two students placed there. I think total they have less than 15 in the entire system. We have two many less than 15. It, that's the regular um, up to age 23 students. That's not their adult workshop. That's the actual school. But we have two. Also, I'd like to make a comment about the food service. That really looks good, that number. That's exactly Finally. <laughs> yeah, it's on its way. Yes, good. they're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all I have. Anybody else? Roll call. Mr. North? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Rosenthaler? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Personnel? Yes, with personnel received a resignation this week. Uh, one of our special needs education assistant, she will work through this Friday. Um, accepted that uh, with approval tonight, uh, Kristen Kamen. Um, employment number 282, Claudia Gonzalez as a ELL educational assistant. We have um, several um, classified and one certified employment as substitutes, Michael Cook, Beth Lesh, and Shannon Logan. That is what I have for personnel there. Continuing. I'll continue on. Okay. Supplemental contract to that next group. They are teachers that are serving as coaches. So we have Coach Kaiser, Coach Douglas, Coach Higgins, Pickman, and uh, Higgins for and tennis. So those are brothers separate. Um, special contracts, those are non-employees of Norwalk City School District that are helping with the different sport programs in track and softball and tennis with uh, Mr. Ogilvy, Singler, Schmidt, Preston Pellman, and uh, Pelham, and uh, Mozina. And then we have volunteers in track, baseball, softball, tennis, and then three volunteers at the elementary level that will be assisting in the classroom setting. So those are the, uh, the grouping of personnel. Thank you. We have a motion for approval for personal items A1 through 7. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. And we'll go. Mr. North? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Rizzo? Yes. Mrs. Witt? Yes. Superintendent's report. Yes, we have two administrators that uh, have a contract that is up as of this academic school year so what i'm asking for is to authorize me to notify these administrators of the dates of their contract expiration and that they if they wish they can meet with you in a uh, in a session so those two individuals are listed there one is our principal of mayhurst elementary that's ken moore and then tim shield which uh, he works in our building and grounds operation so those are only two administrators in norwalk city school district that have a contract that is expiring at the uh, end of this school year Number two, board policies. Um, you have received those copies, so hopefully you look through them. Um, what language is typically saying boilerplate? Um, we get it through OSBA, and it clarifies some language that has changed. A lot of our case law and legislation, we simply have to do. These two policies that I'm putting forward tonight, they didn't require any customization by me, by Norwalk City Schools. They're simply, Norwalk and many other schools are adopting this because we have to. So if you look under health education, that policy, speaking to adding electronic cigarettes, um, speaks to that matter, and then talks about in health education classes, we're gonna let our students know about anatomical gifts. Uh, the beauty of those that choose to give organ tissue donors and letting kids know that that's available to them. So that's language that's being uh, um, seen by all adopted and having to be taught as the health education. And we talked about, you know, where do things fit in? Health education is a, is a growing area because that's a semester long course at our high school and we continue to pack more and more stuff into that. So at some point we'll have to decide where we pull stuff out because seemingly health education, you have a lot of things placed into there and that's, um, that's the way it is. Um, the, the second policy um, deals with College Credit Plus. Um, the primary piece with there besides criteria for being accepted as a College Credit Plus student from grades seven through 12 um, House Bill 110, I believe, spoke on the mature nature of college courses. So what we're saying is a middle school student or a high school student essentially has to have a permission slip to say, which you don't have a choice, you're signing off um, 
validating that you know adult content will be part of your course. So whether that course is taught within our walls with our instructors or taught at BGSU Firelands or NC State, your seventh grade child could have access to what's considered mature content. That's not gonna be limited as much as personally you might not like that. That's when we talk to our kids with College Credit Plus, we always say up here are the benefits, here are the warnings. And like anything in life, we have to make that risk assessment. So is it good enough for that versus what they'll be exposed to? That a 12 year old, 13 year old child is gonna be sitting next to a 50 year old. Mm -hmm. Things are shown, things are discussed, which might make you uneasy. And that's where parents have to decide whether that's the good choice for them. So that is required, that state. So it's not essentially an option to you. It's basically saying, if I'm having my child go and I make that decision, understand mature content will be a part of that. Or, could be, sorry, could be a part of that coursework. So those are those two policies. A3, um, simply continuation of the College Credit Plus. Um, essentially any university can be a piece with College Credit Plus. Some require the contract. So I have one here that Mrs. DuPont and I would sign with your approval, stating that we can have some of our students, some of our Norwalk truckers take coursework, College Credit Plus, and this lays out the kind of the floor, the high, the low, the ceiling that we would have to pay for kids based on credit. So that's detailed in the uh, Lorain County Community College uh, uh, agreement. Number four, looking to increase the classified subs. So those are our people that are cleaning our building um, in, in classified positions. It has been at a $10 rate for some time. Um, like all things, and I've sold this to a lot of people, like, if you're good at what you do, you're never paid enough. If you're not good at what you do, you're probably paid too much. I know, and I'm not naming people here, but uh, um, a couple of board members heard me mention this person that I know what this person does. And to say, yeah, you deserve more pay. You clearly deserve more pay. So um, 11 to 50 is a spot right now, knowing that we're going into negotiations with our two um, NTA and OC. Um, subs are outside the union. So that's why I can make this arbitrary move myself with your permission to make it happen to go from $10 to eleven fifty. So anyone in this room knowing that, you know, what pay is and what salary and what hourly wages look like, and you know people that are making sure our buildings are clean and looking good each and every day, 10 to eleven fifty um, is a necessary and, and the right move to make. So that completes my items for approval. Brad, is that the best we can do? The reason I sat there and I'll go next level with you now, since you asked that question is, we have our employees that make just under 12. So when you say, is that the best we can do? I'm not saying it's the best we can do now, but I don't want sub rate to be higher than a contract right. rate in an OPC agreement right now. Right. So that's the sweet spot of 1150. Because when I talk about the person that I would mention and she knows who she is, no, you're good. You always say, yeah, your value, and it doesn't come just in money. It comes in appreciation of what you do, and we tell her that, and principals and teachers tell her that, but that's why that rate is, is what it is, because we don't want that advance over current employees that are making just shy of 12. Right, but the subs also aren't making any kind of benefits from it either. They're not getting health benefits or retirement benefits right. or anything that they're anyone else. Correct. Okay. No, sub, sub, just an FYI, subs do, subs take part in the same retirement. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. A motion for approval for items A1 through Thank you. Second. Second. discussion. Roll call. Mr. North? Yes. Mrs. Crawford? Yes. Mr. Moore? Yes. Mr. Ritzenbauer? Yes. Mrs. Wick? Yes. Items for information. You hold the news. Um, well, right now, I, I, last month I mentioned um, you'll get to share exciting news that probably next month. Because I'm not ready. I wasn't approved to release the information yet. So um, I'm excited about it. And I can't wait to hear about it. Um, but uh, open enrollment is happening, and they're about halfway. I guess I don't want to say full, but. Um, as far as enrollment. Um, so if you have any students interested in uh, signing up, it's better to get uh, signed up early because um, otherwise you'll get put on a wait list. And, 
Um, but I also want to make note that even though you're on a wait list, your GPA does matter. So you can bump ahead. Your GPA is better than somebody else. And um, you were 14 on the wait list, and you were better than 14, 13 people ahead of you. Um, it does play a factor. Legislative report. I don't know. Maybe they call it. Not this one. And OFCC work session meeting update. So that is what Mr. Ritzthaler referenced. We are wanting the OFCC rep to come to us and explain our options. So this is looking at the build project for a potential new school um, across the street from here from Norwalk High School. Um, we need to hear our options. So outside of, you know, emails aren't appropriate, we need to have that person in front of us. So that's what we're looking at. So Mr. Reem has played a critical role because this goes to the, the previous superintendent and had some hands and, and some workings with that. So he can speak to that more so, but we're essentially asking and, and looking for dates that will work for the five of you to when does that, it has to be a public session of when this person can come to us and explain and walk through our options as we try to prep and do what we need or Norwalk's numbers pulled to say we can actually operate through OFCC. I do have some, some potential days here for Valerie. Uh, she's our new rep. We've gone through three during the last few years. Uh, just, just turnover retirements, things like that. Um, she works out of the Columbus area, which is pretty typical for OFCC. Um, Thursdays and Fridays are typically their travel days because she employs some internal meetings there. So. Uh, she responded to me, to me today with January 27th or 28th as possibilities, February 3rd or 4th, or February 10th and 11th. So I don't know. I can shoot those out to you guys in an email if you need time to check calendars or if you're going to respond back to her with any of those that were better or worse. Uh, she did say she can do mornings, afternoons, or evenings if needed. Like I said, she is coming from Columbia. <coughs> we do evenings with her. I don't even want to go too late at night. She has a two hour drive and back to her location then. So if you guys want me to follow up tonight, I certainly will. If I kind of talk a little bit, get back to you. Okay. Mornings, afternoons, evenings. I would guess with her. You can't control that air, right. so. <laughs> I would guess maybe a, a late to mid morning with her, probably give her travel time. So I will follow up with her tonight and let you know what looks good mentors can put out. After that. If it's known, she won't come as far. <laughs> I've heard a lot about this building recently, but where are we currently? Because I was under the impression from Mother Administration that we had not enough land, and that wasn't talked about recently. I'll let Brad talk about that. So we're working, and some things are not finalized yet and not ready to go public. But we're essentially the land that we're looking at is across from this from Norwalk High School. But so, currently we don't. Oh, so nothing. the concern right. you're addressing is is being addressed. Right. Absolutely. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, one of the reasons I think that we're here is there's been a lot of talk about the building to the public as it is now. But I, Corey, I'm not sure what timeline, yeah, but yeah, yeah. wasn't there at some point a time where we realized that there was not enough land as it is? Like, I like don't know exactly. maybe like six months ago, maybe? I don't know what the timeline would have been on that. There, there's two possible avenues to go as far as funding the building. Um, and I kind of want the state to talk to you guys about this because depending on how fast the board wants to move forward, one avenue may work better than another one. The actual land acquisition timeline, I don't know that George and Brad have dealt with that more than I have in the past. We do um, property across the street. Um, when we had met with OFCC a few years ago, depending on the size of the building, whether it's K8, K6, K, you know, depending right. on the size of the building, they have a set size that they go by, and they thought we might be a few acres short, but that is all part of the entire process of what size building it is. And you right. need extra things, you know, we still need to buy parking because we have parking here. So there's a lot of, that's why we really want them to come and go through all this because there are a lot of things to this. But, but we do currently own. 20, 20 some 20. acres across the street, which we um, uh, work with the commissioners and they rent the land out. In fact, we just received our land payment um, for renting it out, which was like $2,300. But, but we do have land over there. Originally, they thought we needed a little bit more land, but 
you know, there's it's all owned by the county. So what I mean, wasn't there something within the last six months stating that the state's not helping with any funding? Well, they're out of money right now because they've done so much cotton. There's an appropriation at the state level, it all goes back to the sale, the state appropriation limit. They had spent more money than they had. A lot of a lot of boards were able to pass their projects more than what they expected. So they had they had spent a lot of money on the school building. So that's kind of part of the hold up with it is they are kind of waiting to have some more money. But as you know, the state is in a very good position financially. So they should be able to um provide the spending from the money because they are in a very good position. I guess we can continue with this on um I don't know. Eight board discussion comments. Can I do one more piece here, Mrs. Williams? Yeah, that's so. This doesn't it. require a vote. We have our two presidents here um, Rick Brown, uh, Norwalk Teacher Association president, Sandy Ratliff. Um, so, our two presidents are we are in negotiations, as you know, looking to start here. We're doing interest based bargaining, looking to do that. I need a decision from the five of you who is going to be and be a participant with that. So if you can let me know, it doesn't require a vote just like we did earlier, if you can let me know who has the ability to make that work, that you will be part of our negotiations with Mrs. DuPont, Mr. Reen, myself, and uh, Mr. Brown, and Mrs. Ratliff, as we have those meetings here in the future. I know Mr. Ritz and Valerie talked about a lot lately. I mean, do you want to do that? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I make a Could you do it? Yeah. Happy to do that. I just I saw I read your article in the paper. It seemed like you were really no. curious about that, so I'm I'm happy to. So it's you, Mr. Crawford. Yeah. Okay. Happy to. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, I mean, it's yeah, like, it really was. I had a good experience. Was it like three years ago? Yeah. Right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Any more discussion, comments? <coughs> um, I do have the board policy. So um, as after election, I started to do a lot of research and just all, all things board member associated. Um, and I also looked at state policies, other people's policies on our own. Um, you know, pass this out. And during that time, I did find one policy that's in our policy handbook currently. Um, AFA is the code. And what it says is that we should be doing an evaluation of our school board operation procedures annually. Um, it doesn't exactly say how we could do that. But as uh, Mrs. Wick said, um, I know I personally didn't run uh, to not hopefully make a positive difference. And I know Jeremy's the same way. Uh, I think there's a lot to say with what has already been done, but I think there's always room for improvement. This policy is our own, and it does show uh, 13 objectives that should be gone over annually, how we're doing with it now, uh, what can we do to keep it, if it, say, for instance, our policy development, if we're doing it well, how are we doing it well, how do we stay there, um, and improvement. One of them is fiscal management for the board, uh, so there is fiscal responsibility for the school board uh, to be involved in. But um, I think that this could be done at either our next board meeting where we all actually do discuss uh, each of these 13 objectives and what we could do, or we could do a work session. But it is in our uh, policies that it should be an annual appraisal. Would you like to chair that for us? I'd like to do some in depth study here, so I'd like to have a chair. I mean, I'm fine with that. I think it's something that would be good for us. I mean, we're supposed to be working as a team, and this uh, would definitely open up discussion. I mean, speaking of, I mean, there is um, board member orientation number five. Uh, Jeremy, how did that go for you? Yeah, so I just think there's definitely things that uh, I mean, I think we could do better on, and we could work together as a team to get there, and this is in our board policy so unless it was done differently before and do you have any suggestions um we'll just make sure that this is added on to our agenda next month and that if anybody has any 
um, input comments on those 13 items we're discussing them. So you would call session? Well, I'll have it added to the agenda. What okay. we want to do? How we want to move forward? Yeah. It could be anything, right? It doesn't really say if it should be a work session, if it could be in a board meeting. It doesn't. It just says that it should be appraised. Did you want all 13 of these to be done in one meeting? Because you brought it up. Well, this is, I mean, our, how did you do it before? Did you do the evaluation before? Yeah. 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 Is that superintendent and others? ourselves as a board? Yeah, evaluating ourselves and how we can go forward. So we could definitely say the year and objectives and that's what it said. I'm not getting history from me. I'm the new superintendent, <laughs> Mrs. Crawford. So. <laughs> well, it says that you would be involved right. and anyone else that would want to be right. involved. I mean, there is, right. you know, superintendent board relationships, how we can make a better communication between all of us. I think it's, we want change, so we got to make it, right? So let's, take some, you, let's take some time look at it because I I don't know. I mean, this is kind of catching me off guard. Yeah, right. Um, kind of, I think it should probably be a work session and do like maybe have the list. So I'm just throwing an idea out there. Because that is a lot and, to discuss. Right. And honestly, there might not be a lot to every single part of it, but I mean, I definitely think it's a good place to start and it gives us a good place to start with. Yeah. How we can function better as a board and function as a board, and work two new people out of five, and it would be nice to have that support. In more possession, we don't necessarily have to have it here. It's still announced as a public, but we can have it at the board office. We can have a work session anywhere. You know, okay. In the district that you choose, but it is an open public right. meeting. Sure. All right. okay. Or we could just, however you choose to do it, if you wanted to start, we could start talking about each one maybe a meeting and how we want to um, praise our progress. Okay. Um, I think it's just uh, one of the ones I came across on the many that are in our, in our policies. Okay. I'm glad you're um, well, let me um, look over this. I'll talk to a few Brandon on it too, and Jeremy, and I'll figure out how we can enjoy, figure out how we can break this down. Um, as long as you've been here, have they done this? No, I don't recall having done this as a, as a board. Um, so this is new. Right. Okay. It's new, but right. old. Right. So, we won't make a decision like right now. Yes, right. And that's why discussion is why. Right. Okay. Anything else? Motion for adjournment. Second. And roll call. Mr. Norris. Yes. Mrs. Crawford. Yes. Mr. Moore. Yes. Mr. Wittenbauer. Yes. Mr. Wittenbauer. Yes. Bring your cookies and drinks around before everyone leaves. We do have cookies and drinks here, people. So make sure you grab those on your way out.